Hi, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Pivotal Moment. I'm your host, Nikita Faustin. Download Pivotal Moment on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Podbean. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking basketball, as in the WNBA. Now, COVID may have changed the way we view the games we love, but it hasn't changed our love for the game. This week, the WNBA launches its long-awaited 2020 schedule at the IMG Academy in Brandon, Florida, home to all the games this season. And today, Pivotal Moment is talking with Michael Alter, owner of the Chicago Sky. For more than 24 years, Michael Alter has served as the president and owner of the Alter Group, one of the country's largest commercial real estate developers, responsible for some of the most impressive structures you'll see around the U.S. and here in Chicago, including the new headquarters for both Google and Salesforce and the second largest WeWork space in the country. In 2005, Alter did something amazing, which all of us in Chicago hopefully have been a part of or at least are aware of. He took that same visionary approach that catapulted him to success in real estate and applied it to sports. Alter created a professional women's basketball team in Chicago, the Chicago Sky. Now one of 12 teams with the NBA. Alter is also the founder and president of City Year Chicago, whose program, the City Year Youth Service Groups, connects young adults to a year-long program of leadership development and community service and the opportunity to serve as mentors. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. That's quite an introduction there. <laughs> A lot of stuff. Well, I try to do my research. I want our listeners to know what you do and why you do it and what they can do to be a part of it. So thank you for making time in your schedule. I want to start with the sky, with the Chicago sky. The team had four playoff appearances between 2013 and 2016. They made it to the finals in 2014, to the WNBA finals. What does this type of team, Michael, mean for Chicago? And what does that success mean for those who follow the game? Well, hopefully it means that a lot more people are going to be excited and uh, engaged and interested in being part of the Chicago Sky because we are still very much the new kid on the block in a city that has a tremendous sports history and, and a very long one. I mean, if you look at all the other teams in Chicago, they've been around. I think almost all of them were like, uh, whatever you call them, they were uh, part of the original founding of the ML, basically baseball, NBA, NFL. So we have all these historic teams that go to the very beginning of those leagues, and then along comes the sky. So having an exciting young team, which we have now, and a very competitive, we think championship-ready team, hopefully is going to get a lot of people excited, and we're building our, our own tradition with the sky. You know, we're 15 years into it compared to, I don't know, 100 years for the the Bears. Uh -huh. they just um, but we're on our way. So we are on our way, and they play in such a, a fabulous arena. The Wintrust Arena is one of the most, I mean, United Center is great, don't get me wrong, but Wintrust is so much newer. It's so much like more engaging. To me, it's like an experience versus just a game. So I highly encourage everyone listening to go and see the Chicago Sky. I want to ask you this, Michael, because as I mentioned. Before you do, can I just add about Wintrust? Oh, thank you for absolutely, it. please. The other thing I would mention is Wintrust is much more intimate, arena. Yes. And so every seat, you're very close to the action. Even if you're in the upper deck, you feel like you're right there. It's also very accessible. There's a CTA green line right like two blocks away. So you can get there very easily from anywhere. So it is a beautiful new arena. So I encourage you all to, to check it out. I echo that that sentiment. It is an incredible arena. And you guys hosted um, Media Day and All-Star Practice. And um, it really does give you kind of like a best seat in the house. There's not a bad seat because it is so intimate. So it's really, yeah. really, it's wonderful. Uh, very well done. And so I wanted to ask you this, Michael, because you have been in real estate for so long and had so much success and so many ventures uh, everywhere. So you really could have started or purchased a franchise anywhere. I um, in any kind of business. So why did you choose basketball and why women's basketball? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. I kind of felt like it chose me, to be honest with you. I was had zero interest in getting involved in a, in a sports <laughs> at all. I was minding my own business, doing my real estate. I did play basketball, so I did have that connection. And, and basketball was very transformative to my life. It, it, it brought me to communities in the city that I would never 
gotten to before, introduced me to people I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet because, unfortunately, Chicago is still a very segregated place even today, and even more so when I was growing up. So it really was my life. And I've always thought of sports as, as really having this unique transformative power, unlike most other things. And having said that, I had no interest in being in sports. I'm not a huge sports person other than having been a competitive athlete when I was younger. But when I met these women, I didn't know there was a WNBA. To be honest with you, that's how far out of it I was. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had been around, I think, seven or eight years at the time I first heard of it, and I had never even known it existed. But when I did hear about it, I was sh- actually very shocked about the fact that I didn't know about it. It told me that and that Chicago didn't have a team. Again, given this great sports, rich sports history that we have here in Chicago, it, right. it was very embarrassing to me that the league had been around that long. And Chicago wasn't part of it. So I started innocently asking questions about that. And it just after, you know, a little bit of time, it sort of became apparent to me that nothing was going to change unless I sort of made things change. And so that uh, inspired me to do something. And I put a group together, diverse group of people, and and we should have a team. This is too important to not be part of our city. And let's make it happen. So that's kind of how it came to be. That is an incredible story. I love the vision. And you said that you view your role as a way to encourage young women in professional athletics. So talk about your particular role in the process and what that means for you, both personally and even professionally. Well, that, you know, again, that was really what appealed to me or attracted me initially was I met a few of the players. At the time, I didn't know they were professional basketball players because I didn't know there was Right. right. But these women were incredibly, I thought, inspiring, powerful, intelligent, really composed and poised. And I'm just, you know, I was kind of blown away by them. And I, wow. you know, this is, these are, these are outstanding role models for young boys and girls. And we need to have this in Chicago. That was really, I just thought this was just too important a thing to, um, you know, to not do something about it. So, That's really how it came to be. We are so glad that you did. And I mentioned your real estate background and experience at the top of the show. And I wanted to ask if that vision as an entrepreneur in the real estate space, if that applies, and if so, how in this venture with the Chicago Sky? I would say it was less the real estate as it was just being an entrepreneur and building things, putting things together, bringing people together. I had a tremendous amount of help getting this guy started because I'm not a marketing person at all. As anyone who knows me will tell you. (laughs) So I needed some really smart people. I had a a woman named Margaret Stender, who was the original CEO of the team and a partner in it as well. And she was phenomenal. And um, John Rogers, who's become a major partner, um, continues to be a great thought partner with the team and also. Being a successful entrepreneur, you realize, you know, you need smart people. You need to get the right people together to make things work. So it was more of those general lessons from business and knowing how to build something, um, I would say, that were really helpful to me more so than the real estate in particular. And you mentioned uh, sitting down and kind of talking with some of the players and being really impressed by their intelligence, their passion, their acumen for the game. So how does kind of having these kind of women at the forefront in these uniforms at the Wind Trust, how does this help young girls or just young athletes in general to envision what is possible? Well, you know, it's kind of hard to quantify exactly, but I, you know, every game someone comes up to me and says, you know, tells me a story about how important it was to them that this team is here or to their kids or their grandkids. And, you know, just to see these young women out there, to see what they can do, to see how, they're respected and recognized that it's creating inspiration to them, their grandkids, whatever it might be, and yeah. giving them the ability to dream of things that they otherwise might not be or aspire to. So, you know, so it really comes out more in anecdotal storytelling kind of ways. Yeah. And you can, like, say, point to directly. But that's very real stuff, too. That has to be rewarding, right? Is that one of the most reporting or rewarding parts of yeah. what you do, having people come up and say stuff like that? It absolutely is. There's no question about it. That is absolutely the the, the thing that keeps me going. Yeah. Um, 
it really is kind of a bridge because when I think about real estate, I think about like structures and bridges kind of like structurally connecting us. And then I think about sports kind of in a figurative sense, kind of connecting us as well. And so why do you think that sports is such an important part of the development of a young person? You played sports yourself. You said you were able to go into these diverse communities in Chicago and kind of get a feel and connect with people that you might not have otherwise. So the same for what we're doing and what you're doing now. Why is is sports, it's a kind of a broad question, but why is it so pivotal in so many lives, whether yeah. you're a fan or an athlete? Yeah, well, I think you mentioned the mayor was talking about it too. You know, she spoke about how important it is for building confidence and particularly in young women, but the research on this is very strong um, in terms of, you know, if you look at the number of women who are in CEOs or senior executive positions, you know, a huge disproportionate, I can't remember the exact statistics, but hugely disproportionate number of them played sports. And mm. again, it's the confidence, the team building, the collaboration, all those things that make you successful in sports carry over in life. And, and it's not to say that you can't be successful without having played sports, but there's no doubt at all uh, in my mind or from the research over years, decades now, that shows that that connection is, is very high and it's a huge, um, and it's, you know, it's true with men too, it's a huge um, advantage in, in the real world to have that experience of being particularly a team sport. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think it teaches you those fundamental like character building skills and like the ability to work with people and different kinds of people and yeah. you know just yeah, kind of and, and learning how to deal with failure. Yes, <laughs> yes. How to, how to, learning to be resilient. Yes, and you know again all those as you said those character building things that are critical for anybody in anything you're doing. They're all life lessons that are are very much part of sports. And you mentioned people coming up after a game and like sharing how this is meant to them or, or what it's meant to them or their families or someone they know. Is that what you love most? Because my question is, what do you love most about being the owner of the Chicago Sky? Is, is that what it is or something else? No, that's a per, from a personal satisfaction point of view, that is key. I mean, you know, we're very committed to wanting to have a championship here. I really want that for the fans, for, for the players. You know, we've got a couple of players who've been here a long time with us who really, I think, deserve that, and we're on the verge of that. So, um, And then from a bigger framework, I'd say the thing that keeps me really going is, you know, we want to prove to everybody that this league is here to stay, that it's yes. going to be successful. We want it to, you know, our ultimate dream is that we're part of the landscape of the major men's team that were not a niche sort of afterthought, but that were, you know, at a scale or level where the women are getting paid um, much more in line with where the men are, which is what they deserve to be. And Absolutely. You know, this league is considered in the context, not as a niche thing. So that's really working hard towards getting at. And is there anything in particular, we talked about the Trust Arena and the accessibility and how wonderful of an experience it is. Is there anything you want fans, anything else that you want fans to know about the team in particular or the WNBA in general? Well, as a fan, I would say, you know, we have a very young team with really exciting, dynamic players. Uh, we've got the best point guard in the world, Courtney Vandersloot, who's breaking every assist record. Yes. And so it's a really fun team to watch. We're high scoring. It's very key. So the games are, are a lot of fun. Uh, people who haven't been to a game, I would... Uh, strongly encourage you to do that. And <laughs> I would encourage you to do that too. Ditto. I think there's uh, a lot of people who come for the first time are really kind of amazed at how athletic and how fast the game is and how physical the game is. Yeah. They're, I don't know what they're expecting, but if they're not used to women's basketball, particularly women's professional basketball, again, you know, we all have our biases that we bring with us. And so a lot of them come thinking it's going to be something dramatically different from what it really is. So yeah. Yeah. And this team is, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great group of people. I will share, you know, just to give you a sense of the kind of the character we have on our team this year. We we had uh, more free agents uh, starting lineup. You know, four of our five top players were free agents this year. And we had a new CBA, oh, with wow. a new salary cap. And so players were allowed to get paid a lot more money this year because yes. of the new salary cap. And... Honestly, we, we were not able, if all of our players wanted to get paid what they were entitled to or what they were able to make, you know, we would not be able to keep everybody. But we yeah. had a number of players who were willing to take less than they could have gotten elsewhere because they wanted to be in Chicago. 
They wanted to be with their team and their teammates, and they're very, you know, committed to creating a championship here. So I think that, you know, tells you quite a lot about the kind of people we have on the team, the kind of players we have, and their commitment to to Chicago and to bringing a championship team here, that they were willing to make that kind of financial sacrifice to be here. That's the ultimate reflection of, of value and worth, right? That they want to come here and play here, and even if they make a little less, that they want to be a part of Chicago. What is the draw about it, do they tell you? Because it's the city, because of our sports history, uh, because it's the sky or Chicago sky? Why do they say this is the choice they made? Well, I think here? it's first and foremost because of their teammates. Yeah, and the bond that they have built together in the last couple of years. Yeah. I think they all feel like we're on the cusp of, of a championship. And, Agreed. And they laid the foundation, and they you know, they want to see it through. I think the coach is a big part of it, the organization. Um, so those are the, really the main things. Um, you know, the city, if they, if that's not the primary thing, but that's uh, if they didn't like, you know, the city wasn't a great place to be, all those things would be a little tougher to, you know, but being, you know, they're all – Becoming part of Chicago, a few of our players have now bought homes here and now yeah. really committed to being here. So that's great, and I think we'll see we'll see more of that as well. The title of the show is Pivotal Moment, and so what I do as we're talking about the process of the women or these women coming over, these amazing athletes coming to Chicago, I want to ask you about your pivotal moment. We ask folks, what was the difference? What was the one thing that changed or made the biggest difference from what you wanted to do to what you are doing, from where you were to where you wanted to be? And you've had a lot of success, so I don't know if you can point one out or if there have been several, but I know you went to undergrad at Harvard. You went to law school at University of Chicago. You've got this amazing real estate business all over the country, and now you're the owner of the Chicago Sky. So is there a pivotal moment in all of that or any of that? that kind of has made the difference. Yeah, no, it's hard to, to, when you look at from my life, and I'm an old guy now too, so there's there's a lot of those. But in terms of the context of our conversation, I would say, um, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but when I met these WNBA players uh, probably 18 years ago, whatever it was, this is our 15th season, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that. So we'll be celebrating our 15th year here yes. in Chicago. When I met these women, not knowing who, who they were, that there was a league, that was definitely the pivotal moment in terms of my getting involved with the Sky WBA, something, again, I never in a million years would have <laughs> uh, seen myself doing uh, any sports team, let alone a women's sports team. But that encounter and that opportunity to spend some time with them and get to know them changed all that, opened my eyes to you know, something I never knew was out there and got me thinking about, again, like I said, you know, the fact that Chicago was a part of it and the fact that I've benefited so much from being in Chicago and you know that I needed to do something okay, to bring something to Chicago. So that that was definitely a pivotal moment for me in terms of the, the history of the sky. Oh, that's so awesome. I love that. I love that. And when you played basketball or when you were an athlete, where were you playing at and for what team? Was this like in college or Yeah, so I was a competitive in high school, played okay. very high school program and some AU stuff had the gotcha. opportunity to play with uh, some really great players like uh, Isaiah Thomas and played against some great players like Terry Cummings and uh, Glenn River. So it was a great my decade, my vintage, if you will. Was <laughs> That's awesome. Quite, quite great in Chicago basketball. And then I, did, I played a year in college. It was all I played before I decided I was going to move on to other things. So high school was really, you know, the most uh, you know, the competitive years. But, again, that's where I had the opportunity to travel, uh, not only around the city, but around the country. They used stuff. And, uh, that was transformative for me as well in terms of just opening my life, the lens in terms of how I saw the world and viewed the world and all that. Wow. I love that you had that experience, you know, of being an athlete and playing basketball and just having a greater appreciation for what these women do every day and, you know, all the women in the league. What are you most looking forward to, Michael, in this next season for the Sky? I'm looking forward to having everyone back, which we're going to do with one exception. Um, and I'm looking to forward to really competing for a championship. We feel like we've built a lot of momentum from, from last season and... Again, I mean, everybody, like I said, wanted to be back and build on it. Off the court, I'm looking for us to continue to 
build the momentum which we have in terms of building our fan base and, and our sponsorships. This new CBA is a great opportunity to, that we're, we have a new, I should mention too, I believe we have a new commissioner who is fantastic and really dynamic woman who was the CEO, the first woman CEO of a major financial firm, Deloitte. And it's just bringing a tremendous amount of energy and experience to the league in terms of trying awesome. to grow okay. uh, the relevance of the league and our. So we got a lot of exciting things happening. And is there anything, Michael, that we didn't touch upon that you think would be especially helpful that we might want to share with fans or anybody listening about the sky or anything else related to the WNBA? No, only that, <laughs> you know, this is an exciting time for us as yes. a team and the league. And, um, you know, we're just really excited about the the future. And the future looks really, really bright. So I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your very busy day and very busy morning to talk with us. I so appreciate it because these are amazing women. It's an an awesome game. It's a great venue um, and you will be better because of it. So thank you again, Michael, and we will be following the Chicago Sky. Well, thank you. It was wonderful to talk to you. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great weekend too. Bye-bye. Many thanks to Michael Alter for sharing his insight and vision for the Chicago Sky. They are champions and leaders both on and off the court. We look forward to their continued energy and to be clear, their complete domination in the 2020 season as they play in Florida. And although there will be no fans in the stands, we are going to be rooting for these amazing athletes just the same. Thank you again, Michael Alter. Please click on the link at the end of the show notes for the full 2020 schedule. Also, coming up in our Game Changer series. You do not want to miss this. It is our interview with number one draft pick in 2017 and current point guard for the Las Vegas Aces, Kelsey Plum. We'll get her take on all things WNBA and the season we have just begun. Also stay tuned with our or for our interview with Joyce Ecromato, former Harlem Globetrotter. She's going to talk to us about life on and beyond the court. So much more on Pivotal Moment. You don't want to miss these amazing people. Thank you so much for your support, for tuning in, for downloading. I'm your host, Nikita Faustin. We will talk to you next time.